All right, what's going on guys? E.T. Zeno, back again with another video. Today's video is my jail and prison stories part five. This one's about my time in IDOC boot camp, Illinois Department of Corrections boot camp. Uh, this is going back again to the last time I was in Cook County Jail, uh, which was, uh, I was arrested in April or May of 2009. Uh, the first couple months I was in Cook County Jail, I was in, in Division, uh, out. actually I think I was in Division 5 first, which was receiving, and I think I went to Division 4, which at the time they switched over from the women to the men. Uh, one side of the building, or one side was uh, just regular cells, 18 and 6, and then there was another side, which was uh, a few decks for uh, Division 4, uh, which was the drug unit. Um, and I think some people did their whole drug unit time there, uh, but you were also there while you were waiting to be transferred to Division 14, the real drug unit, uh, which is after a couple months, is, which is where I went for the last four months. <laughs> um, so Division 14 is a separate building. Uh, it's a big building. It used to be some kind of hospital back in the day. and. So in there, it's not cells, you have rooms, which is, uh, depending on the size of the room, between two and multiple people in one room. Uh, the regular beds, I think they're bunks, but it's just one, you know, one, one bunk, not uh, a double. Uh, you had windows in the, uh, in the rooms, which you could open up, but they had this uh, steel metal mesh, uh, but you could still get your fresh air, and, you know, there was a big day room with, like, these hard plastic rubberish chairs uh you know there was tv in there uh but you had to go to groups during the day they had speakers uh they had uh decent bathrooms they had showers to where it was like your own shower there was no i don't know yeah i think there was curtains but it was a few showers in one room but each person was in their each individual shower um you know so it wasn't bad at all when we first got in there uh, I think it was, uh, I want to say it was, I thought it was August, but that, it was July or August, it was really hot, and there's no air conditioner in there, uh, air conditioning in there, but I remember when we were getting off the elevator, the, uh, corrections officer there was like, welcome to the Cadillac of jailing, and that's pretty much what it was, uh, welcome to the Cadillac of jailing, uh, so anyway, uh, I was in there for the remainder of four months fighting my case. Um, I remember we did, uh, I had a really good public defender, this woman. Uh, she, I could tell she was, she, she was really trying. Uh, she was really trying for me. Uh, I liked her. I think she liked me a little bit. She was pretty cute too. She was young, like maybe in her early 30s. Uh, and uh, we did a couple motions, motion of discovery, because basically at the time what happened was the police never had a reason to stop me to begin with. Um, and it was funny too, because when we did the motion, or the last motion, that would have, uh, it, it should have, I should have got the case, it should have got the case dismissed. Um, when they did that and they, they called it, there were still people in the courtroom, and then they put me back in one of the cells, one of the holding cells, and then they, called me in when nobody was in there all the court cases were done there was not even anybody in the court it was just like the judge me an officer and my public defender and that was like it and then he said motion of discovery uh denied or whatever like when there was nobody around because if any when the people were around when we were uh you know speaking our piece or whatever you could see that i would have won that but i didn't and uh he ended up giving me four months of IDOC boot camp, which is, uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's boot camp and it's in place of going to prison. Cause at the time it was my third, uh, charge for the same thing, so-called burglary. Uh, and, uh, it was a class X felony and they gave me six years which is what I would have had to do. But with the time in Illinois, I think you do 50% of your time. I don't know if they still do it now, but that's what it was before. Uh, and, or, yeah, now I think you do 50% of your time. So with the time I already had in, uh, I still would have had to do over three years though, or about three years straight. Um, so he gave me the boot camp instead. And so this is a whole fucking hell of a thing. So when, when I got sentenced to boot camp, 
you leave from the jail, uh, I'm not sure how long after it was, but you leave from the jail and you go down to Joliet, Illinois to Stateville, to Stateville NRC. Not Stateville to prison, Stateville NRC, which is a receiving area where you wait to either go to prison or to boot camp. And uh, at first we were in cells, then we were in a dorm, then we were back in cells, then we were back in the dorm, and it was a whole crazy time I was there for like 52 days waiting to go. Uh, when you're in the cells, there's no windows, there's no TV, there's no magazines or nothing. You're in there 24 seven. You get out like one hour a week for a wreck or something like that. Uh, one or two days a week for, it's supposed to be a 15 minute shower. They give you like five minutes. Uh, it's, it's bad, the food is horrible. Really small portions. You lose weight in there. There's literally nothing to do. I mean, not even magazines. So imagine that you're just in a room 24-7 with nothing and another guy. Uh, so that was really bad. But uh, the boot campers were able to work. So you would work during the day, uh, passing out trays. Uh, at one point, I got a, a job in the uh, infirmary, in the hospital, just cleaning up and whatever. Uh, you know, so that was fine. Uh, we had some, uh, I don't have enough time on this for the, to record this, but I have stories about, I have stories about the NRC, which I'll get into at a different time, but this one's about boot camp. Uh, so anyway, we finally get to boot camp. It's a certain group of us. We go on down, and this is uh, all the way down by Kentucky, way southern Illinois. Uh, you're literally right there by Kentucky. It's the south west corner of the state um this boot camp is in the middle of nowhere it's just a small town decoin illinois if anyone's familiar with that uh you're in the middle of nowhere and surrounding the boot camp is just fields and woods uh but it's completely open there's no gates nothing and it's just like the boot camp is just like the military boot camp probably like the marines uh for the army regular uh, basic training, I think, is, I don't really remember, I think it's like six weeks. This was uh, 16 weeks, and but like three weeks before graduation, I got almost got into a fight, and you can't put your hands on anybody there, they don't tolerate that, so they gave me an extra 28 days. So I got to see everyone that I uh, graduated with leave, and meanwhile, I'm still stuck there. So uh, the boot camp, uh, so it turned into 21 weeks straight. Uh, they would work you out all day, uh, three times a day. When you first wake up, they wake you up, I think, 5.30 in the morning. You get up, you get dressed, you go outside to PT, or if it was really super cold, you go in the gym. But most of the time it was, uh, you know, December, January. We're going outside and working out on this uh, cement, it's basically like a parking lot. Uh, platform and it's 10 degrees outside and you're working out uh, you know they would do push-ups bends and thrusts uh, stomach crunches uh, there's this one where you get down like in a in a, in a, a push-up position but then you're running like uh, running in, uh, I don't know you are running in place you do all these exercises like you would if you're in basic training except the only difference is you don't have a weapon like for instance when you're running in place your whole, you have your uh, arms, your hands above your head, and if you were in the military, you'd be holding your rifle. But instead, obviously, you know. Uh, and then uh, after that, you would go back to the dorm. I think we showered, and then we would get our blues on, and then we would go to breakfast. And every time before every meal, when you're lined up, before you go in to eat, you got to jump up on the pull-up bar and do five pull-ups, at least five pull-ups. And then you go in and eat. Uh, the, they fed you pretty good. It was hot meals. It was the portions were huge, and you could get extra portions, but only if you're going to eat it. Um, then you have you know x amount of time to eat your meals, and then you go back to the dorm. And you know you basically don't really do anything besides work out. Uh, they had like free time once a week. I think it was once a week uh, to where you could go to commissary and just like get a few items and just sit in the gym whatever eat your candy bar drink your warm pop and uh that was about it write letters to home do whatever you got to do uh the showers there that 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 sucked we would have to shower all together about 10 
10 guys at the same time, five on one side, five on another side. But, I mean, you know, it's not like you you can't even pay attention to anybody else. You just got to pay attention to what you're doing because you only have a minute or two to shower. It's just like literally a quick rinse with a bar of soap and just a minute, whatever. Sometimes the water is ice cold or whatever. You just da 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 and then you get out. And they did that twice a day, I think. Uh, but they have this thing, if you get in trouble... Uh, you know, you could get in trouble for the littlest thing, for talking, for not having your shirt tucked in, for having uh, your shoes untied. Most of the time, it was for talking. Uh, they would have, you know, you'd be in your, your dorm, uh, where you, you know, in between whatever, and you're not supposed to be talking, but they would catch you talking. Officer would be walking around, creeping around, and they'd be like, cards! You have these cards, uh, demerit cards, and I think there was 12 on a card. So if you get caught talking, they're supposed to take one demerit off, or mark you for one demerit. But sometimes these officers would be, would be assholes and mark two, three demerits at a time. And sometimes you'd have multiple in the day. So if you get all 12 demerits on your first set of cards, that's called popping your set. In which case, uh, if you got 12 demerits, you'd pop your set and you'd have to do a day of what they call motivation. Now, in the manual, motivation is supposed to be, uh, I think it's for X amount of hours, but what you're supposed to do is, it's supposed to be monitored extreme workouts for 15 minutes straight, and then you just stand there at attention for 45 minutes and rest. And then another 15 minutes of extreme uh, workouts monitored. But that's not what they did. They did a lot of things wrong at, the, at this place. They did a lot of things they shouldn't have done. And uh, they got away with it because there's nobody around. There's no cameras. There's no nothing. So what their motivation was, was extreme workouts for all hour, every hour, for eight hours straight. Some days if it was raining or something like that. I remember times where they made us just stand at attention for eight hours in the rain. It's like 40, 50 degrees out. By the end of this, you're so fucking freezing. You're numb. I remember when we came in, you, everything is red. Your hands are red. I couldn't even unbutton. I couldn't even unbutton my shirt because my hands were so fucking numb. Um, and that happened multiple, multiple times. There would be times where uh, they had these big logs. Uh, one of them was called the bitch. Basically, what it was was uh, telephone poles that were cut into sections. And they had different sizes, like they had one where you had to put your arm around it and hold on your shoulder and then walk around the track where we work out, and I don't know how many pounds it was. And then they had a bigger one, and they had, then they had a two-man one, which was the bitch. So one person is standing in back, one person's in, in front, one person's in front, and then it could be a person that you got in trouble with, actually. And then you both have to hold this log with your arm around it like this, once back end on your shoulder, the front end on his shoulder, or vice versa. Then you could switch sides, but they would make you walk around this track with this thing that was probably, I don't know, two, three hundred pounds. All right, this two, three hundred pound log. And then you'd have to walk around. This is for hours and hours. And, 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 and my, uh, and I had to do this sometimes, I think two, three days in a row. And my shoulders were so bruised up and raw from this fucking heavy as log digging into you and then you're turning so it's grinding into your shoulders my shoulders were so bruised black and blue and purple uh kind of like what i was talking about the other day from the violations green yellow all that shit it looked like seriously like i had been beaten with baseball bats it was really really bad imagine being like that so sore and then having to do it again the next day for hours you know it's shit like that that they're not supposed to do and the whole point of that, they're trying to make you quit. And if you quit, uh, you would have to go in and sit in the one section, uh, like in the lobby, all day long in a chair staring at the wall. And if you do that for X amount of days, then uh, you could they make you quit the program and then you go to prison and possibly do the rest of your time in prison. Uh, real quick, I need to check how much time I got left. All right, I got uh, about 10 minutes left here. So... Yeah, man, it was just really crazy, and it was stuff like that that uh, happened all the time that shouldn't have happened, things they shouldn't have done, you know. Uh, as far as the working out, when I first got there, I was probably 120 pounds, uh, you know, just 
you know, from using and drugs and everything, be you know, before I got locked up and then you lose weight even in state. Well, I don't know at that time if I really lost weight, but there was other times where I definitely did. Uh, I probably did in there. I don't know. And, uh, you know, when you first get to boot camp, you, your hair's long, you're, you have a beard, you're, you stink because you can't shower often. But uh, the workouts, basically whatever, basically they're, it, it, they break you down and then build you back up. After a while, I liked the workouts. And I started gaining weight, started getting bigger, and like other, you know, people in my platoon noticed like, I'm like, yeah, dude, you're getting bigger. And, you know, I saw the same thing with other people. Uh, there was fat people there that lost so much weight so fast it looked like there was something wrong with them like they had cancer this one dude lost so much weight and it was just flops and flabs of skin like it looked weird his face was all pushed in it, it looked really crazy um it was just uh just a lot of crazy shit happened there uh what was i gonna say so when you first get there you get off the bus and you got these drill sergeants with their you know their their hats and uh, and then uh you know it's just like a, a hazing thing for your first uh you know however long you're there uh you know they get you in there they, they strip you down whatever they shave your head and uh have you take a shower and all this shit take your picture for your id and then they purposely fuck up your hair and leave patches all over the place like you should see some of the people it was so messed up uh and then, but after that, like two weeks later, oh, in the, in the first two weeks, you're in a white uh, jumpsuit that you're called a ghost. And then uh, after that, once you get through that and you don't quit or anything, then you get another haircut, a decent haircut. You get your blues and your thermals and everything like that. And, you know, things start getting better after that. But uh, and sometimes, you know, they let you do as many pull-ups as you wanted to. I think the most pull-ups I did was like 20 or 25. And that's going all the way up lift your chin up above the bar go all the way down you're like it's not like uh, 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 like that you you're, you're you're holding on like this or whatever you pull yourself up you go all the way down pull yourself up, you know so uh yeah you're just pulling your own weight uh literally you know you're lifting your own weight and uh, i got pretty big when i was there i mean for me to gain weight and muscle like that it, uh, is uh pretty significant and you know i have a high metabolism um and stuff so for me to gain weight and muscle like that like I said was pretty significant I was around uh, 150 pounds when I got out of there so I gained like 30 pounds while I was in there and uh, yeah it was just crazy stuff man um, one quick thing here let me see how much time I got left again all right I got oh now I got about 10 minutes um there is this one dude okay that uh, <laughs> He got, he was this uh, dude from Indiana, kind of hillbilly-ish, like white trash-ish. Uh, he was a cool dude, though, at the time. Uh, but, uh, and he was, uh, um, he was in the meth. He was like a meth addict. I don't know if he did heroin or other stuff like that, but he did meth. And uh, he had meth mouth. His mouth was completely rotted out. His teeth were completely fucked up. And uh, this one day, he got a tooth infection. Extremely bad toothache. I'll tell you what. I've never seen. A t I've never seen anything like this. This tooth infection. This toothache was so bad. His face swelled up so much. He was unrecognizable. Uh, before they did anything about it and took him to the hospital or whatever, his face swelled up so much. It looked like he was wearing a mask. Like. Like, kind of like, uh, you know, in House of a Thousand Corpses or something like that, when, the, you know, when Otis cuts the old man's face off and then he puts it on. It looked like that. Like, you couldn't even recognize the dude. It literally looked like he had his skin mask on. It was fucking crazy. And then they finally took him to the hospital, which was at the prison, and uh, and then they pulled the tooth and, you know, he got better at it. But just, like, crazy shit like that, man. Uh, let me try and think of anything else significant. Um, during the day, uh, after our workouts and after we eat breakfast and stuff, uh, I forgot to mention, we would work during the day. And you would go out on, in vans and you would go out to the town or out in the you know woods, out on the roads, pick up garbage, do this, do that, just miscellaneous stuff. So basically it was free labor and, uh, you know, 
it was I mean you were out during the day so you know there was a lot of freedom there and then I go from that they say uh, they told us at one point okay when you get home when you graduate you're gonna have to be on house arrest for two months so it's like what the fuck I'm in boot camp I have more I had more freedom at boot camp locked up than I did when I got home so you go from this is this is what's fucked up you go from like I said they they tear you down and they build you back up so you go from eating well working out multiple times a day staying active working during the day you're out and about and then you go from that to going home and having to stay there and do nothing does that make any goddamn sense whatsoever any sense whatsoever it doesn't help motivate you to get a job like it doesn't do anything like how do you have more freedom locked up than when you go home it doesn't make any goddamn sense if they, if, if they wanted you to succeed they'll let you go home and help you find job help you find work and all this you're, you're basically like in the military for these four months or five months that I was in there and uh, you know hang on a second all right, well, anyway, damn, man, I'm almost done with this video on the fucking wind. almost knocks my tripod over. But anyway, like I said, you had more freedom in boot camp, locked up, than when you do when you go home. And if they want you to succeed, they'll let you continue doing good when you get out. But they don't want you to, to succeed. It's a business. They want you to come back. You know, it, it's a revolving door. It's, 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 it's a business, you know, uh, human livestock. But anyway, guys that's it for this one uh if you enjoyed the video go ahead and like and comment and subscribe and when you subscribe hit the notification bell so you get notified every time i post a new video and uh I, again i have uh more stories to come so until next time peace